You've probably seen these before. They're sticker packs. At least, this is what passes for sticker packs nowadays. Stickers wrapped in slick, shiny chromium foil? Not on my watch. Foil is for conspiracy theorists and leftover turkey sandwiches. Here in the art lab, we like our stickers the old-fashioned way, wrapped in glorious screen-printed wax paper. Unfortunately, they don't make them like this anymore. But just because they don't, doesn't mean we can't. Did you know you can make your own wax packs at home? At least I think you can. This is going to be a bit of an experiment, but I'm confident we can pull it off. Either that, or we may crash and burn colossally. Either way, it should be interesting. Come on! So together, let's attempt to uncover the secret formula for creating wax pack sticker packaging. I'm Scott Circlin, enter the art lab, time to suit up. So, our goal is simple. Replicate the look and feel of vintage wax packs. That means the style of trading card and sticker packaging that was popular before 1992 when companies switched over to plastic and foil. First, we need to set some ground rules. The rules for this project are as follows. Rule number one, respect the original. We want to recapture the look and feel of our cherished pop culture memories. Rule number two, whenever possible, use common everyday materials to build our project. If there's a tool that might not be readily available, I'll try my best to give you an alternative option. And rule number three, make it your own. You're more than welcome to recreate the original inspiration, but I'm gonna urge you to tap into your own creativity and put a unique spin on the project, no matter what your skill level happens to be. Okay, let's talk materials. I'll leave a list of affiliate links to all of the materials I plan to use in this video, but feel free to test out your own tools and materials. This is a lab after all, so you're welcome to experiment. Oh, and in this video, we're only making the wax pack packaging. If you wanna know how to make the stickers that go in the packs, I have a separate video for that. Here's what I recommend. First, you need a program or app to design the art for your packs. I'll be using Adobe Photoshop and Illustrator. Next, you'll wanna have a few sheets of 25 pound tracing paper, depending on how many packs you wanna make. It's always a good idea to have a few extras to practice with. You'll need a metal ruler and an X-Acto knife or a paper cutter. In addition, you'll need some paraffin wax or a large white unscented candle. A desktop printer, preferably a laser printer. Inkjet printers aren't ideal for printing on tracing paper, but if an inkjet is all you have, make sure to print your sheets out one at a time and give the ink ample time to dry. Another thing you're gonna need is an iron or some other source of heat. A curling iron will work too. There are a few optional materials like copy paper and glue sticks that, spoiler alert, we might need, but we'll get to that soon enough. One thing we won't be using is foil. Hey man, do you ever wonder why hot dogs come in packages of 10 and hot dog buns come in packages of eight? Think about it, it's a conspiracy between Big Bread and the Lips and Anuses lobby. Do the math, man. You can't just buy one pack each. You got two francs left. Who wants two francs sans bun? In order to have an even number of wieners and buns, you gotta buy like four packs of hot dogs and five packs of buns for a total of 40 each. That's where they get you, man. <laughs> speaking of lips, <laughs> speaking of lips and anuses, Let's talk about gross food. If we're gonna make wax packs, we need stickers to go in them. Fortunately, I already created some gruesome gourmet stickers in the last episode that we're going to design our packaging around. This brain hamburger is our hero image. We used it as our puzzle back, and we're gonna use it again for the cover of our packaging. It's kind of our big showpiece, like Adam Bomb is to garbage pill kids. Unfortunately, we can't just use it as is. The thing that sets wax packs apart from modern plastic and foil cards is the old school printing process. The wax is screen printed using a limited color palette and the colors are often slightly off register, giving them that unique vintage look. Although we are going to be screen printing the design, we are going to replicate the look to capture that authentic wax pack aesthetic. I've opened both the line art and the logo I created for the sticker set. 
I played around with some clever branding for this set, but sometimes it's best to just shoot straight and let people know exactly what the product is. So I simply went with gross food. I'm pasting the logo and the artwork into the template I created for the wrapper. I've uploaded this template to my Patreon within the Wax Pack post. Anyone who's already subscribed to my newsletter will get this file as well as files for future projects in their inbox. It's free to subscribe and includes my awesome Comic Maker Starter Kit, complete with templates, brushes, fonts, and additional assets for making comics. With all the elements in place, it's time to give this wrapper the retro print treatment. To do that, I'm going to apply a few effects to the artwork. First, I'm going to duplicate my art layer, hide the original layer, select the copy, and go to Filter, Noise, Median. This will reduce some of the sharp edges by rounding them off a bit. I'll use a radius of two pixels. Now I'll go back up to Filter and then select Distort and Ripple. We don't want to go too drastic on our adjustment slider. 25% should do it. It looks like the ink is really absorbed in the paper, which is good, but it's a little hard to read, so I'm going to make the original line art layer visible and then change the opacity to 50%. That's better. On a separate layer under my line art, I'm going to add some solid colors. I'm not going to go too crazy because the screen printing on wax packs was limited in the amount of color they would use. Now I'm going to select my color layer and nudge it over a tad to make it look off register. I'll do the same for my solid background. We can add the same filters to our color layers as we did to our line art to make it look less crisp. Next, I'm going to add some screen tones. I'll duplicate my color layer and go to Filter, Pixelate, Color Halftone, and bring the radius all the way down to four and set my screen angles all to 45 degrees. I'll change the blending mode to soft light to allow the original color layer to show through. I've repeated that process for my background color layer, only this time I brought the opacity of my screen tone layer down to 35%. In the file, I've included a pulp paper layer. I'll make that visible and change the blending mode to vivid light. There are a number of ways to achieve a vintage weathered look in Photoshop. You can have fun testing different filters or blending modes until you get that particular look you want. For me, I'm pretty happy with this. Time to load our paper into our printer and start printing out our designs. Okay, uh, remember when I said this was an experiment and things could go horribly wrong? Uh, we ran into our first snag. It appears that the tracing paper is too thin to go through most printers, laser or inkjet, without a jam. It works on some, but uh, not all, and I don't want you guys to wreck your printers. So, uh, looks like uh, we need to come up with the plan B. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a glue stick and some sheets of copy paper. Run the glue stick just over the outside edges of the copy paper. Now carefully lay your tracing paper on top of the copy paper. Seal all the edges. Theoretically this should make the tracing paper thick enough to go through the printer without any issues. And since our design will be printed in the center of the tracing paper, we'll end up cutting out all the outer edges with the glue. Here's another useful hack. If you don't have a laser printer, you can use the aforementioned steps and then run those sheets through the self-serve machine at your local office supply store. The prints are looking pretty good, however, it just doesn't have that wax pack paper feel. Time to remedy that. I've got my paraffin wax. As mentioned, you can also use a white unscented candle. We're going to press down hard on our tracing paper, applying pressure, and rub the wax thoroughly over our wrapper. Now 
Now that's what I'm talking about. It feels just like a wax wrapper. Of course, now we get to put it all together. Let's grab our stickers. We may want to cut out a sheet of white copy paper about the size of one of our stickers so that the artwork doesn't show through the semi-transparent wrappers. We could wrap these packs up now and be pretty content with a job well done. However, many of the old sticker packs included a stick of gum. This stuff was nasty when the packs were new. Imagine what it looks like after 40 years. Well, we don't have to imagine. Ugh, gross. This is even nastier than our card art. It's really hard to find this type of gum anymore. You can find sticks of chewing gum, but not so much bubble gum. The closest I found is this roll of bubble tape. It's not quite as wide, but it's about as close as we're gonna get. So, let's cut a length of it off with kitchen shears. We'll place the gum on top of our stack of cards. Now it's time to wrap them. This can get a little tricky and it may take some practice. If you've ever wrapped a present, the process is similar. I think wrapping presents is a lost art. Nowadays, most people just throw their purchase in a gift bag and stuff it with some tissue paper. Like if you prefer ripping open your presents rather than pulling them out of a bag. Follow these steps to fold the wrapper around our stickers. Finally, we can quickly run our iron set on low over the back of our package to seal the wax. It doesn't take much. And there you have it, DIY wax packs. I can't believe how authentic these packs look and feel. Check it out. a limited number of these handmade gross food sticker packs to my online store at cirqueworks.com so get them before they're gone it's so awesome recreating all of these incredible pop culture memories from my childhood and putting my own unique spin on them there's more nostalgia out there that I plan to reverse engineer so if you want to see what I come up with next press those waxy fingers firmly down on the like and subscribe button until then you can check out another video right up here